Hello, Barry. <laughs> okay, how you doing guys? Hello, Barry. Hello guys, how we doing?
Hi, Florian. If you can hear me, Florian, just type in yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what noise in the background?
I guess you guys can see me. But I cannot see or hear you, so how do I resolve that?
I'll turn the microphone on now, maybe you better hear as well then. Oh, 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 oh. You can hear as well. It's funny having one way conversations. I'm just sending messages as well. Look, <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Excellent. So at least some parts of the technology is working. Just be nice if there was some people. I'm not sure who is here. Oh, it shows on air. Maybe we are live. Maybe we are live. Ba, ba. How about now? Can you hear me, Andy? Hello. Oh, that is so good. I feel lonely. <laughs> I feel more than lonely, Andy. Do you? Why is that, my friend? Now that you're responding, I feel good. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Um, I'm glad we're all kind of in. So we just got Barry to come. Just asking Florian, I see my presentation hadn't been uploaded. Do you have access to do that? Or Florian? I have. Oh, you've have got Can you upload it for me? I have done that. How do I, where do I put it? You have uploaded it. Well, it looks like I've done it perhaps not in the right manner. 
yeah, it's not showing in the list of pre so when you all oh, just quickly I tell you what, let me open up uh webinar geo. Um webinar jam. Let's open up a session. So you go to the webinar. If you find the web and if you go to my webinars, yes, then if you click on the edit button, okay, uh, you see that? Yeah. And then you get the option of express or full configuration. So we go for which one? Full configuration. Full configuration, exactly. Yeah, good stuff. Then go to live, the tick box live, third one from the right. Yeah, all done. Then go down and uh, bottom option is pre-configure your slide presentation. Okay. And click Add edit. New slide. edit and upload in there. And give it a name like Andy or something, so we know it's my one. And it should upload. It is doing that. Excellent. Wait till it says uploaded before you click OK or whatever the button is. It will say uploaded when it's done. Bum, 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 bum. You can have your camera on, Wally. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, did, I did earlier on. I can, but my background is not so good let me turn it on what do you oh, think handsome man that you are there <laughs> there we go so what is, what's your plan when we're live i just wonder what you do because i think when you're talking or whoever's talking it's better to turn it's better i do this when you're talking there's no point us all having cameras obviously it's just a distraction okay so before we continue let me just uh so it's all uploaded and then i click save all right, save and then confirm uh, do you see the confirm button? Confirm. Yep. Okay. Right, excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I might lose you. I'm going to do a refresh here to see if the presentation comes in. So let me just refresh my browser and see what happens. Hi, Barry. I'm back. Yeah, Andy, just a quick question. How do I add a second slide, my own slide? 
How do you mean add, a, add another presentation? Yes. Do the same again, my friend. I clicked on edit. Yep. And click on. And for, you, oh, yeah, you the fast oh, yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Excellent. Now they seem to be waiting for me to start. So Where's that Barry? He's online, but he cannot see or hear. He can hear, but cannot see. Oh. Is Barry in the admin console? Well, we are. Uh, he's not showing in the admin console. Can we... Can you send to Barry the link? You know the, the links for the uh, um, presenters? Because the one I had kept taking me to the main page rather okay. than this console. My, my, my webinars again. Yep. And then go to links. I mean, get this. Let's have a quick look. My, uh, Your links. Yeah, I got it. And there should be one for Barry there. For the presenters. Each presenter has their own link. Yeah. Uh... Presenters login. Email, selling by email. Or you can copy, yeah, send it, WhatsApp or whatever. Oh, Florian, I see a message. Barry has some tech issues. <laughs> okay. So let me just test this. So let's. Just checking out this round. There we go. And then when I'm doing this, if you just you can turn, can you just turn your camera off a second, Wally? There we go. And that looks better, I think. Then it's just one of us online. Perfect. Then I can stop that. I go back, and then you can go back on screen again if you wish. Excellent. There we go. So, how do I start the event? Uh, if the event, you should have an option uh, at the top of the screen, I don't see them, where you've got the blue button, there should be one to go live at the top of the screen. Can you see those? I've got, I've got, I've got end call, so that means we are live. Oh, we live? No, can't be live. Have you gone live already? I Obviously, can see... <laughs> <laughs> you got live already. You're keen. Maybe you've already put us live while we're setting up. So people yes, can... events already live. Excellent. Events. People have the excitement of that as well. <laughs> you got live early. Press the wrong button. Not a problem. Our friends can see us already. That's okay. Like yes. we're not saying anything horrible about people. Uh, Florian, if you can raise your hand up again and let me try you with your speak request. <laughs> oh, yeah, Florian said the event is live. The event is live. We're live. <sighs> We're live, we're ready to rock and roll. Yes, we are. If I can just find my slides, if you tell me where to find it, and I will. Have you uploaded it, my friend? I have. Good. So then if you go over to the right-hand side, the uh, second option from the bottom is slide presentations. Yeah. Click on that, and then you should see my slide and your slide. If you don't see your slide, you might need to do a refresh. And refresh would be... Locking you out, like that probably lock you out and you have to go back in again, which could be a bit worrying, actually, because I'm not sure if that will knock out the whole session if you're the controller. So if I grant you controller status... Yep. That so should be okay. you administrator status... Mm -hmm. There we go. Work. Okay. Yep, and I, that's why I can see all the controls now. And I see we oh. are live. So I'm going to log out 
end call and then log back in or just refresh? Yeah, do a refresh your browser and log back in. So we will be exploring membership growth and retention in our clubs. Again, it's a panel discussion. My name is Wale Oshosami. I'm your host tonight. And with me is Andy O'Sullivan and Barry O'Connell. Would you like to say hi, Barry? Uh, we've got three minutes to start. Andy, would you like to say hello? Andy O'Sullivan? Hi, Wally. Yes, I'm still here. Still here, connected, ready to go. And Barry, would you like to say hello? Let me hear your voice, Barry, if you're there. Uh, 
Maybe don't be shy. All friends here. Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Transley. Uh, this evening, it's all about exploring membership growth and retention, a panel discussion. So we'll just go ahead and start. If you have any questions as we go along, you can just put it into the chat box and I will get on with it and do my best to answer them or just as best as I can. So we're exploring membership growth and retention. And uh, just gonna keep that as it is. As Toastmaster Clubs, one of the things that we want to do is to ensure that we grow our clubs, ensure that our members do have a great time. And so it is important that we do spend some time focusing on what makes our members happy. In other words, how do we retain members and how do we grow our clubs? My name, as I said earlier, is Wally Osho Simon. I'm your presenter tonight. and Co-presenting with me is Barry O'Sullivan on the panel, Barry O'Connor and Andy O'Sullivan. Andy, would you like to say hello? Hello, good evening. Great to be here again. And Barry, if you're there, would you like to say hello as well? Okay, so we are not hearing from Barry at the moment. What I'm just going to do now is to just uh, 
See if I can get our club, District 91 Club Group Director, Florian Bay, to come up and just say a few things. Florian, if you're there, can you just uh, acknowledge? Should be on air now, Florian. Uh, Andy, if you're ready, I'm going to have to ask you to start your presentation. You seem to be the Absolutely. best prepared. Adam. Happy to start, mate. Can, I'll tell you your presentation now, but I can jump straight in. That's not yes. a problem. So. Let's do that. Give me one moment, get that set up, and then uh, we will do that. So here we go, let's go back to the start of my presentation because we've kind of jumped a bit too far ahead here. One moment. as I wasn't expected to come on so early, that's okay. With Toastmasters, we can come on and do anything. So good evening and welcome again. So I'm gonna have the pleasure of running through a brief presentation that I, I did a few weeks ago. And I did this as a webinar and I know looking at the list of attendees, I had the pleasure of seeing some of you on that webinar as well. So I'm just gonna do like a high level 10 minute overview of what at the time was an hour presentation. So we won't have time to go into too much. But it's going to be the, the top level that for those who had the pleasure of joining me on that webinar, it's going to be a nice recap. And for everybody else, it's going to give you some core information that will help you to attract members, grow your club, and of course, retain the membership as well. And that's what this 6S system does. I get my tongues totally around that. And one thing I want to be clear about is that this is what people are looking for. They're looking for solutions to their problems because nobody out there wants to join your club. Nobody wakes up in the morning wanting to come to a Toastmasters club, to find a Toastmasters club, to join one. They've all got problems. And that problem is mainly public speaking, the fear of public speaking, being nervous. And they know that they, they need to give presentations at work and they want to be able to do that. So. To help them do that, one of the, the, the key areas to look at is, what is your website saying? What is your website saying about your club and how up to date is it? So often when I look at club websites, they don't give the right information to people, if they give any information at all. I was at a club only last week and I asked them for their club URL and then nobody actually knew what their website was. So take time to look at your club website or whatever social media you've got, and are you giving the solution to people that they want? This is, I, I think, is um, a good example of a, uh, a website. I mean, if you look at that, you see they're answering the questions that people have got, they're giving them the information. That's their pain point, which is what we, we want to be, be, be doing. So have a look at how your club website is set up. And be aware of where it's linked from and to as well. People can find us on Toastmasters International. So your club is listed there on the website. So people can find you by postcode, by location. And then hopefully, once they found that, they're going to be able to come along and know more about your club. But here's the issue I find with a lot of clubs. This is what you often get when you click on that link, those links. And this is just for a sample of clubs in London, where I'm based, when I was doing this presentation at some area training. That is what I was finding, which is awful that so many clubs in this small cluster are not available. And if you see that, what are you going to think? You're going to think the clubs are not available. The clubs have shut down. So be
Hopefully you'll still hear me because I think I lost connection there briefly. So this is what we, we need to have out there. Make sure all our websites are correct. Make sure all our information is correct on our websites, on our on our social media. Guys, can you still hear me? I'll just see a web message saying the sound has gone. Uh, I can hear Wally in the background, so I think we're okay. So hopefully that's great. You can still hear. So let me move on. So this is the, the website and what you have there is your shop window. It's your shop window to the world and people, great, glad you can all hear. Excellent, guys. Thank you for confirming. Thank you for confirming. So be aware of your website, know the URL, check it, maybe make it generic if you need to. I don't believe the club sites, they have to be updated all the time. We've all got a life to lead, even me outside Toastmasters. So try it and have it kind of ge generic in a way, but make it up to date. Make sure you know what is on there. And then when you have that, we're going to look at the next session is what is it that people want? You go to Domino's Pizza, you want pizza. That's what you want. You want pizza. You don't want to know all about the history of Domino's Pizza, how many branches they've got and what's going on in Domino's Pizza. You want to know what's available, what's in it for you. So make sure it does say that. This website for Toastmasters, it talks about what they are, what they're doing, where, where they are. You know, who cares, right? You're looking for a solution to your problem that you want to learn public speaking. Who cares who they are? So make sure it's kind of focused on them so people understand what you can do. You can provide a solution to their problems. That's all, all people are really wanting to know. That's what we need to have on our websites. So make sure we can attract them in. And I'm keen that we attract them in because there's so many other people outside the Toastmasters community who run some very dodgy training and we want them to come to us. So always make sure you're you focused in your, your website, in your copy, answering the issues that people have. And then they're going to want to come along to our Toastmasters community. Then we have our Sergeant Arms. That's the third step in this system. The sergeant at arms being the person who should be welcoming everybody when they come into the club, be it a guest, maybe a new member who feels a little bit nervous when they still I think uh, we got we lost connection again, but I'm definitely back now. The sergeant at arms is a person who welcomes people, as I say. So let's make sure that they are doing that. But not only the sergeant at arms, every single member of the club welcoming guests, making them feel part of the community, making them feel they should be there. So even you should be doing that every time. And I do when I go to other clubs. If I see people feeling lonely, sitting on their own like this, go and chat to them. Right? Nobody wants to be there. They all feel nervous. So let's make them welcome, chat to them, and make them feel part of the community and the clubs we have. That is what makes people want to come back when they feel welcome. So let's help them to do that as well. And part of that is what the sergeant at arms will generally do, or somebody in the club running the guest introduction session. And I think there's a few things we can do to make that even more welcoming and supportive for everybody. First of all, the question, say in your name, make it an easy closed question, like your favorite color. Now that might be easy, Chris, that's, that's so easy. But when you're nervous, that's a big question. Say your name, stand up in front of everybody. I used to be on courses and when I say go around the table and say your name, I used to rehearse it because I felt stressed and nervous. So let's not make it a big question that they have to try and figure out an answer to. Or I was at a club recently, they asked you three questions to try and answer. And I always believe guests should stand up. If you're doing the standing up in the room individually, it's sloppy to say all the guests stand up. That's not making it easy for the guests. It's only making it easy for the person who's there. 
so who's running the session. So let's make it nice and easy for the people who are there. Our guests, again, small steps. Those small steps help them to feel welcome. They've achieved something, which is what we want them to do. Because when they feel they've achieved something, they're going to come back to your club. The fourth part is the table topics. And table topics is a great way we can, if you have the capacity, you can get guests involved in this, but certainly members. And I think the key part of table topics is to ensure that members are taking part in it if they haven't got a role. I go to clubs sometimes and I see table topics being asked to somebody who's got a speech, maybe to the Toastmaster of the night, and then other members are leaving having not spoken all night. So always ensure the table topics are prioritised to your new members, new members of the club. Make sure everybody gets the opportunity to speak. After all, they've given up their evening, their morning, their lunchtime to come along, to give them that opportunity and then maybe offer them to guests too. But ensure, again, they're structured in a way that people can easily answer them and not going to get caught out in any way and feel uncomfortable when they have done that. The next is to now evaluate our progress. How well are we doing as a club? What can we do to retain members? What can we do to attract members? What can we do to convert them to join us? And there's various ways we can do this. The first is we can use this spreadsheet that Florian created. It's a way of tracking. You can download a copy there to see what it is that we're doing and keep track. And then you know what's going on within your club and be prepared. You know, Let's recognize new members. We often do these with evaluators and speakers. It's great when people do those in our club. You know, I love it to give, this is something we do in my clubs, a new member certificate. You can buy ribbons for this as well, but recognize it because it has a multiple benefits. First of all, the person's now a new member. They feel great. You know, they've got a certificate. They love that. Guests see that people are joining your club. So there's evidence that you are a great club and that they too should be joining. And the third thing is members now know that somebody else has joined as well. So it has multiple benefits to recognise all the new members you have in your clubs as well. And the fourth step, mentor. I'm not really talking about mentoring progress here, but mentoring the people doing the roles. All the people, know, especially when they're doing it first time. That's really important. And my clubs, I will speak to the person doing the guest intros. Make sure they have a question that's suitable for the night. Make sure they do understand how to do it. If people are doing table topics for the first time, I'd also check with them call in advance, not on the night, because people get a bit stressed if you start making changes on the night. But try and do that in advance. Check with them what it is that they're, they're the questions they've got make sure they're suitable and they understand to us maybe a couple of experienced people first then it's newer members and guests and then finish off with a couple of experienced people i have seen it where they start off with guests and obviously a guest doesn't know what to do so always make sure they understand the, the way to do it as well that helps to have the the success of your evening as well and that, my friends, is the six-step system, a high-level view of it, of what you can do to have success in your clubs. And uh, to prove it works, this is a, a up to date screenshot of the new members who have joined my clubs this month. So as you see, people are coming in, they're joining because they feel part of the community. They can see the, the benefits, they can see how it works, and they want to join. And that's what we want people to join us, join our community, rather than mention some of these rather le less uh, dubious, somewhat dubious organizations which are out there. If you want a uh, infographic, please feel free to go there. That's where you can grab a copy of it. And it goes through these steps as a great reminder. And please to get that and maybe even share that with your committee as well. That concludes my part. I will pass back to our host today, Wally. Yes, thank you, Andy, for that uh, speedy overview of your session. Uh, the <laughs> really good to hear that. Um, if you have any questions at this point, can you just type it into the chat box? Unless uh, we do not have any questions. Uh, my own chat seems to be quite empty. I don't know if you can see anything from your end there. What's your question there, Bo? Oh, sorry, um, Wally. 
Yeah, I'm thinking, can you see any questions from your end there? Any questions in the chat I box? I can't the questions come. Sylvia says, our club priorities to prioritise its guests for table topics and not members. What's your opinion on that? My, no, my no, is, it's okay having, so let's put the camera back on, there we go. It's okay having guests doing table topics, but members have to come first. They're the people who have paid their membership fee. So every member should be speaking every meeting. And that to me is just so important. And if we, and my clubs are big clubs, if I have, we have a club meeting and at the end of the night, members have still not spoken, we would do a whole extra table topic session at the end. We won't we'll evaluate it, but we certainly do an extra table topic session. And you know what? We run over time. So what? It's only five minutes, eight minutes, and we did eight the other week. It's important they speak. And the funny enough, guests actually like that. You might think they, they get frustrated by it, but so much of the great feedback from guests, because they say that it's wonderful to see that everybody has a chance to speak from the front of the room. So I would always prioritise members first, ensure every member speaks. As I said earlier, why, have a, why sit there all night or lunchtime or morning and not have that opportunity to speak? So members should always come first. And then if you have the capacity and you want to offer them to newer members, I say to guests, they're fine. As long as, but do always prioritise members first. Thank you for that, Andy. Uh, David says our club seems to be good at hooking members in with 30% guest to member ratio. However, we tend to lose people after speech three CC. Any ideas? Uh, yes, David. Uh, what we do in our club is we have something which we call that is life after CC. Uh, we tend to promote advanced speeches. We tend to have advanced speakers speak at meetings. And this in itself helps to let the less, uh, the newer members know that CC is just not the end of, uh, of, of the Toastmaster journey. Uh, Andy, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Uh, you're right. It's always good to let, when I do Toastmaster, when I'm doing, I would always even show, I have all the manuals. I'm like that. And I show them all the advanced manuals and let them know what other opportunities there are and how they, they, they can choose them. But I think to keep people engaged as well, it's great if you, your club can have a mentoring program or offer that kind of support to people so that they know that if they get stuck or they, they think it'd be more difficult, that they, they, there is the option available as well to them. Uh, and, and if you don't have the, uh, the capacity, fun enough, one of my clubs is looking at as well, is now starting to do some webinars like this. Well, we can look at some of the more common issues and common questions that people have as well to, to give them that support and to, keep, to help to, uh, to keep them engaged. Uh, uh, thank you for that, Andy. But, uh, I've just put a question from Chris about uh, the new members form. That was something my club created, uh, Chris. Um, I have if you put your email address in the chat box or indeed anybody else uh, to send you a copy. In fact, if you tell me your club, I'll even customise it and shoot that over to you and anybody else who'd like a copy. Uh, Robin's asking about a generic exit interview questionnaire that can be shared. I, I'm not aware of one. Uh, I, I know from experience that suddenly what generally will happen is that people disappear. So we don't often get to know that they're leaving the clubs uh, very often because they just stop coming. And then I, I know what I've followed up with people that they don't often respond to messages or whatever. People do leave for various reasons. From my experience, especially in where well, I'm based in London, people often leave because they um, move away, they change jobs, they move to a different part of London where we're blessed to have so many wonderful clubs. So generally, I don't get to do in in exit interviews, or I'd love to be able to do that to find out if there are reasons. I believe some has been done before. Uh, and I think that's available on Toastmasters website, I, I seem to move. To move. Mark and Chris, thank you for your clubs. Uh, I'll get those sorted out for you. Yeah, if you keep your questions coming, that we can then answer them as best as we can. Uh, Chantal, do you offer new joiners the option of paying their fee in installments? We get mm. this question sometimes, and we appreciate that. Uh, installmental payments. 
is something which uh, we try to offer in our club in Croydon, and that created a lot of uh, paperwork for oh. the treasurer. And so we tend to discourage that. However, we do have some members who have been on that kind of payments regime from the past, so they still continue to pay. But generally, uh, most clubs try to get the payments up front. Having said that, there are things that could work for you locally. So whatever you think is uh, is works well in your local expression of your Toastmaster club, that's perhaps what you should try out. Because some clubs have the, especially where the exchange rates now, uh, some members do have a challenge of coming up with the full amount at the beginning of the year. So that is something you can explore. But generally, it increases the paperwork. Andy, do you have anything? I would agree with you. I, I never offer monthly payment. Um, most of the people who join my clubs in London are working. They can easily afford the membership fees. It's not an issue. And I sometimes think if they're not committed to pay you that sum, then they're not committed to the club and to their development. And then it does become an issue to start chasing people. And in fact, in my clubs, we actually take the full whack once. We take a pro rata sum for the whole year. So we, and my annual fees are, uh, we charge, what do we charge? £144 annual membership plus £30 as a one-off fee. And then we pro rata that, that uh, £144 throughout the year. If there is an issue uh, that people can't generally afford it, then that's fine. And then we work with them and, and help them as we, as, as we can. But we, uh, we don't actually uh, do, do all this um, pay monthly. As you say, it, it's too much administration to be collecting it all in. And we all have jobs. And I think our, our focus is better spent as officers on serving the club and building the club than, rather than chasing the odd £10 here and there. And uh, guys, I see people are pointing for the membership certificate. Absolutely happy to do that, guys. So I will go through the chat afterwards and get those sent out to you. And anybody else who would like it, I'll customize it and send it to you. Uh, yes, keep your questions coming. This is a question and answer session that we're having at this time. Let's see. Florence put a long Dropbox link to something. So I'm sure it's going to be amazing when I click on it, but I won't do it now in case it takes me somewhere and knocks me out of the interview. Ah, it's a membership. So I, Thank you. Yeah, I have a question for you, Andy. So how long did it take you to come up with this system? This system is actually, you know, I've been Toastmasters now coming up for well, 11 years in the new year. And... It's basically based on my experience over those years. I've, I've had the pleasure of setting up loads of clubs. I've been involved in setting up over 20 clubs now, rescuing clubs. And this is what, I, what it's based on, really, trying things, seeing what they work and how they work and getting people involved. People come to my club. And be honest, I don't encourage guests to join our club. We, you know, as I mentioned, we're in London. We're blessed to have where I am. You know, There's loads of clubs. There's one 100 yards up the road. And we always encourage people to find a club that's near them. Because I believe if a club's near you where you work or where you live, you're more likely to go rather than, say, cross London. But people come because they say they like the energy. They like the fact that people talk to them. Um, they, they like these kind of things. So it, it's basically, for me, it's a case of a try something once. It works. You get great feedback for it. So you carry on with it. So that's that's what I do. I, I generally do. That's that's what it is. So it wasn't one day I sat down to create a system. It's really based on all those experiences of starting clubs, rescuing clubs, and seeing how it works, how people like it, and the fact they want to come and want to keep keep coming back all the time. Uh, that that's how the system ultimately uh, evolved for me. What's so got? Yes. Thank you for that, Andy. Richard Morris talking about how do you get experienced members more involved in clubs? Uh, that can be a challenge sometimes because uh, members do have their specific goals and reasons why they have come to Toastmasters. Invariably, I say that uh, most of us achieve our goals by the time we finish the third or fourth speech. 
we overcome our fear of public speaking. But then we have to find new challenges to rise up to. Some of us do this outside of Toastmasters. Uh, that's probably the best thing. So we do encourage members to, to have a goal that is beyond overcoming the fear of public speaking. And when they do find something that interests them, when they do know that Toastmasters itself uh, has application, the skills which mm. you get from Toastmasters can be applied outside of Toastmasters. So we come into Toastmasters to acquire the skills, but then we use it outside of Toastmasters. Uh, that, in a way, uh, and what we also do is we showcase some of our advanced members who uh, 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 speaking publicly outside of Toastmasters. So that itself helps to encourage other advanced experienced members to get more involved. Mm -hmm. Andy, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Uh, I would I would agree with you. It's let people know what is, is there once they've got halfway through the speech. That's why sometimes it's great to mention the advanced manuals. Some people want to give technical presentations. Some people, you know, learn about facilitating discussion, again, the advanced manuals, to let them know what is there. And I also think the, the contests are another super way, ones we're doing now, the ones we're going to have in the spring. Because, again, they push people, they're talking to different audiences, and that gives them growth. And every time I speak to people who are doing contests, especially once they've got out of the club, they think it's such an amazing opportunity. Because, again, it's in our clubs we can get a bit comfortable. And this pushes us to talk in front of different audiences, larger audiences, different rooms as well. So it's doing those things, I think, that help people to stay invigorated and keep coming back each time. Theresa, tips for encouraging more members into leadership roles. Hmm. Uh, that in itself is sometimes a challenge in the sense that uh, leadership roles do take time. Uh, but there again, when at our club meetings, once we are able to, we, we've got conferences, we've got uh, divisional contests that is outside of the club. And once people know that there is advancement beyond the club, so it's not just about being a club VPE or VPM or club president. After that, you can get involved in the area and the district. Uh, there's the relational aspect of Toastmasters, which people also find uh, some benefit from. So we do promote uh, the life outside of the club. Now, one of the constraints people tell us is that uh, time, time is an issue. And so we try and uh, make it easy on them. Invariably, it's always one or two committed members, especially the vice president education that has the key role and that keeps the club going while once or twice some of the others are just hanging on there. Uh, Andy, I don't know if you have anything to say. One of the things that I would do when I encourage people to take roles is give examples of how doing the roles has helped me in my career, in my business, in my life, so that they can see it's not just a task, another burden, but actually it helps them. You know, I might mention when I was a division director and I used to chair a, a meeting every month of 20 people, how the skills are chairing that meeting being good Toastmasters that we finished on time, we got decisions made, everybody felt that they participated in the meeting and had the opportunity to do so. And I always used to say everybody spoke in the meetings. And when I took those into work, and I, on this example, it was a case, there was a rotating chair. And when it rotated to me, I couldn't get rid of it because people liked the way I chaired the meeting. So you can think of examples of how Toastmasters has helped you in your career and let people know that they are transferable skills. And I've got loads of examples like that. So that's why I try and say to members, let them know that how they will help them. And all these roles do do that. That's exactly what we're doing them for. And hence, what I was, another thing I'd always say, like the competent leadership manual, how that helps you in the real world as well. So look at the skills and give examples of one is just another task, another burden. What is it the members are going to get from that and how it helps them in their business and in their career? I think that's a great way to explain it to them. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Barry, are you there? Still can't get Barry on. Oh, dear. No Barry tonight. 
Uh, keep your questions coming up. Uh, we are looking at exploring membership growth and retention. This is a panel discussion and question and answer sessions, District 91 Toastmasters. Uh, with uh, My name is Wally Oshosami. I am your host tonight. And uh, I have Andy O'Sullivan with me who has gone through his presentation. Barry O'Connell, uh, I've got his smiley face on screen. Uh, I can't seem to get him connected due to some yeah. technical reasons. He's logged in as a presenter, but obviously can't uh, join us. And there's a the smiley face from Barry in the chat box. <laughs> So I have another question for you, Andy. Uh, mm. There's something we say, uh, a time which I use, which is the front door, the front door of the club, and then there's the back door of the club. So in other words, uh, I, I, I say we try and widen the front door and uh, narrow the back door so that uh, okay. we have a net growth of members who stay retained. Mm. Uh, so... What, how do, how, how do members, how do we leak through the back side? Pardon my expression. <laughs> how do we lose members? <laughs> so we obviously, we lose members. There are various reasons why people come. Uh, my experience are people do leave us sadly because of work. Uh, I've had people leave because they suddenly get busy at work. People have learned something in Toastmasters, got a promotion or a new job, and now they need to spend more time at work, so they stop coming as well. And there's also people who come for a particular reason. Recently, I've seen a couple of people join over the last year because they have a best man speech, and therefore they come. They want to get over that fear so they can give their best man speech. As soon as they've given that speech, they go. That's served their purpose. But I think if we can try and keep them engaged by... Make sure they've got opportunity to speak. As I mentioned earlier, ensure that every member speaks at every meeting. To me, that is so important. Otherwise, they're going to stop coming. And I, I have seen that in other clubs. So ensure they speak. Ensure they have the opportunities to do roles and good speeches as well. So there's a nice mix for them. They have, they can see the opportunities to progress. And again, always let them know what else they can get out of it from the manuals, from the advanced manuals. And of course, coming up in the new year, we've got pathways, which I think is gonna be really exciting and give them even more opportunities. So I think it's always letting people know of those, what's coming up as well as, as the contest, as I mentioned earlier as well, which everybody should have the opportunity to do because again, that pushes people and helps it with their growth. And if people are still growing, that I think is when they should keep coming. So the, the front door, is uh, to get members excited, to get them fulfilling their goals. And uh, also they leave for several reasons. Hmm. And there was a question earlier on. So how do you get new members coming through your door? Because I know that your club seems to have quite a large number of members coming through. We do. Well, it, it's been, uh, obviously, we have the website. We have uh, yeah, mainly the website and that. But what, what we find is a guest will come back. So guests will come today. Then they will come back next week and they will bring a friend because they enjoyed it so much. They bring their friends. And actually, that happens a lot. That then a new member brings a friend. And I think that's wonderful when you've got people bringing friends, not spouses, but actually their friends from work, or other people, that they've seen the value of it. And that itself increases the number of people coming. And that's a wonderful way of doing it when you're getting those returns all the time and they start bringing people. So that's why I think it's so important to make sure they're welcomed, feel part of it, and you start creating like a community within the club that people want to share it with other people. So make sure your website's answering the questions that people are looking for, you know, giving them solutions to their problems, not just telling them how wonderful you are and how you're part of Toastmasters International Worldwide Organization. That's great, but that's not what people are looking for initially. So address their pain points, then offer them solution on your website copy. Then when they come, make them feel part of it. And that doesn't always happen. I will say briefly, I went to a club a couple of months ago in London, and there's only 16 people in the room, 16 members. And yet when I walked in with a guest who I'd met walk coming along to the venue, everybody ignored us. Nobody spoke to us. And more importantly, they never spoke to him the whole time. Even during the break, 
I spoke to somebody who I happened to know arrived, and this guy was sitting on his own. 16 people, one guest on his own, and nobody could be bothered to talk to him. So let's make sure we welcome people and make them feel part of it. You know, even if they're sitting on their mobile phones, which people do when they're feeling nervous and a bit unsure, go and chat to them. And that is also, at uh, this point I've just thought of, another way to build your skills. When I encourage members to go and chat to new guests, they often, as adults, don't know what to say. They say, what shall I say? And you've only got to ask a question like, are you enjoying the meeting? What brought you here today? So when members are going over and chatting to guests, that's building their network skills. That's building their confidence as well. So it shouldn't just be the committee or the president or the sergeant arms doing it. Every member should be involved in that, create that culture. And that helps build the club as well and gives everybody those kind of those valuable skills to, to network, to chat and to speak to people. Yes. Uh, Yvonne's talking, asking if we've ever done open house meetings, or open days with other clubs. I've, I've never done uh, an open house. As, I have done, and there's nothing wrong with it, advertising a, I've never done it with other clubs, but certainly done it as a special open meeting and advertised it as such. Now, I know all our meetings are open anyway, but sometimes when you start Advertising a special open meeting, that itself drags people in. So advertise maybe occasionally a special open meeting night and people think it gives them an extra opportunity to come. So a bit of kind of marketing angle on it really to do that. But I've never done it with a, a, with another club. I've certainly just done special open nights to get people interested to come along. So I have another question for you. Uh, well, I'll just throw it into the, in, into the mix. The Distinguished Club Program, hmm. uh, the numbers, uh, is there, how, how, how can we use that to our advantage as clubs? How, how do we use that as a measure of club excellence? The DCP, the Distinguished Club Program, so if you don't know it, it is a, it's something the Toastmasters give to each club. And they use it as a measure of how well, you, how you're progressing. Now, personally, it's a valuable tool, but it's not one I focus on too much. Because I believe if you're doing the right things for your club, you get the DCPs. So the Distinguished Club Program has a set of goals and set of points that you get for each goal. For example, your club officers are trained. You're attracting new members. People are completing their first manual. They're completing their leadership manual. And I think as a club, if we're doing the right things, those points will come anyway. So I know some people have sat there a bit like an accountant, carefully watching each point. But to me, you're doing the right things, they will come. And it's a great measure of how well you're doing as a club. Because we should be getting the new members. We should be getting those CCs, etc. So as a committee, we would monitor it. As a committee, we would make sure people are we're fulfilling those. We are training our officers. We are putting our, our membership fees in on time, etc. So it's something the committee should be regularly checking and monitoring. But if you're doing the right things by your club, they will come. They will come easily to everybody. So it's a great, it's a great tool. And certainly it's something everybody, when you're on a committee, uh, should be looking at. And even as members, the committee should be explaining to you, maybe regularly updating the club, letting the, letting the members know what is the DCP? How well are we doing on it so far? What are, we, what are our objectives as a committee, as a club? So people can see how we're, how we're measured and how we're standing and what great progress I'm sure your clubs are making. Yes, thank you for that, Andy. It's uh, more of a tool for the committee members to help to monitor the health of the club. Mm -hmm. I think one of the other things is that it also helps uh, the club uh, vice president education, perhaps in looking at uh, members' progress mm -hmm. through their, their, their CCs or especially their advanced manuals. So there's what we call just planning a pipeline of members so if members are achieving their goals, which is completing their C competent communication manuals, they're completing their advanced manuals, doing their roles uh, as uh, 
as a leader's leadership manual as well. Then, as Andy said, we are doing the right thing for our members and they are achieving their goals and the points will come. Hmm. So it's not about using the, the DCP or the Distinguished Club program as a tick box. It's more as a monitoring tool to see that we are heading towards uh, achieving our goals. And the other thing which I also like about it is that uh, when you advertise on your website that you are a distinguished club, it kind of lifts up, uh, it kind of helps the club itself from um, from the outside looking at it. So what does distinguished club mean? And we as a club, the club president during the introduction always talks about the fact that the club is a successful club because we help our members achieve their goals. And then he or she points to the ribbons which are displayed in the banners mm. uh, which is in the front of the room. That itself gives a boost. It kind of increases the confidence for guests that members, they do get a feeling that, yes, this probably is a club that will help me achieve my goal. So thank you for that, Andy. Uh, please keep your questions coming. Yes, Yvonne, uh, the DCP helps you and your committee to plan. And it's really helpful to, to share with the committee there. That's what we like. It's a monitoring tool mainly for the committee. It is. Uh, if you just joining us, this is the District 91 Toastmasters International exploring membership growth and retention webinar this is a panel discussion uh it's more like an interview tonight interview <laughs> and, rather than a panel discussion uh we've had to make that work for us uh as a result of some technical difficulties we're having with all our other panelists but thank you very much andy o'sullivan for sharing your experience for sharing your knowledge uh with our listeners tonight uh, please well. keep your questions coming So tell me, a tool like Speechcraft, hmm. how useful is it for membership growth or attracting new members? Speechcraft, I've got to be, that's not one I've, I've actually done, Speechcraft. I know the com uh, clubs that do a lot of the, um, uh, I think we have someone in the what for there, I wonder if it's what speakers, and certainly around Reading are, are, are heavily involved in them. And it, was, it has been used or suggested as well, as well that maybe, you know, when maybe a corporate club or you're looking to set one up in those kind of environments, maybe at your work, it's a great way of running a speech craft program as a way of introducing it to, the, to them. So there's great value in the program. And it's a way of, say, any environment. What was it we were going to do before? It was a, a prison. A club was trying to be set up in a prison. And again, run a speech craft program for the inmates there before and to see if that was going to be a way of then going ahead and launching it as, as a club oh there we go newbury speakers somebody just put in that was it, it was newbury yeah newbury are, are very successful at uh, running or were uh, running them at one point uh i believe it was that was a club so there's great value in them and that's a, that i think is a key you know what there are so many resources out there that we can use in toastmasters uh, I think Yvonne mentioned earlier about the successful club series and the plans and there's things like that out there that clubs don't use. And Toastmasters, a lot of these resources that sometimes get pushed to the back because we're so busy thinking about the speeches and the normal meetings. So we 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 can go out there and use them because uh, they are just so valuable and they're proven. And as David says, it was uh, Vodafone was set up. There we go. It was obviously Vodafone being set up for a while. So go out there. So look at that and say it could be a way to get into a corporate club or any other environment before going for the full, you know, the full club. Yes, thank you for that, Andy. Uh, from my experience of running Speechcraft in Speakers of Croydon, hmm. uh, I, I think one of the benefits is that what happens to to speech club attendees so when numbers 
are low in the club. So when your club is perhaps struggling with membership numbers and people are, sometimes the speech crafts can be used to boost membership, can be used as a quick, I wouldn't say it's a quick fix, but as a way of increasing the pipeline of members. And so that has worked for us in mm -hmm. Speakers of Croydon. Uh, so Speechcraft is uh, a tool for boosting membership numbers. Definitely it does work. Setting up new clubs as well. You can start with a Speechcraft program and then people get on board and join members. Mm. But where it works well is when people have something to move on to after Speechcraft. Okay. If there's nothing to move on to after Speechcraft, then uh, uh, they, there's little benefit to running Speechcraft. And where do we advertise for members? Any thoughts on that, Andy? To advertise for members, I go back to my same points. I think website makes it up to create. Meetup is a great place to have. If you don't know, Meetup is a website. Probably better in the more uh, built-up areas than if you're in a country club. Uh, is, is, is a great way. Uh, and, of course, Facebook. Uh, they're the three main places that I, I would probably go to uh, to get members. Uh, and make sure again the information <laughs> that is so key the information you've got there if you've got a website if you're a meetup wherever you are answer the pain points have it up to date and links that work i mean you mentioned earlier about being proud about being a distinguished club or present distinguished club great but i, I looked at one recently and they told me they're on track to be a distinguished club in 2015 Really? 2015. So it's got to be up to date. Or is it things like that show you're not up to date. And then that's when people start wondering if your club's meeting. And as I always say, everybody's just two clicks away from the next website. And that website may not be a Toastmasters website. So therefore, that's where you've got to have it up to date, easy. And another great thing actually is have a phone number on your website so people can call. I have a, my, my mobile phone numbers on the website. And do you know, what? I get a lot of phone calls. Several phone calls a week from people who just want to talk about Toastmasters, what it does. Some people like to speak and I will talk to people and then that's when I can direct them actually to the club that's nearest to them. Because sometimes people are just searching for a phone number. So if you can have a mobile number on there again, it's another way to get people to want to, to visit your club. Thank you for that, Andy. Alan says he's running a youth leadership program at his local high school, and this will inform parents about Toastmasters. Mm. Uh, parents themselves become possible future members. Yeah, that's a good tool. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I saw a question there earlier, but from Tarek about mentoring. Uh, having he said his clubs uh, has got a lot of members joined in the last two months, working external members. I mean, one of the things you can do, again, my club has the same issue, that we, we've got a lot of people joining and we don't have enough people willing or at the level to, to do mentoring. So that's where we are turning to technology. We started running webinars like this that members can join and we can go through a lot of the, the overview stuff. Obviously, we can't deal with their specific questions, but a lot of the, the things to settle them into the club. And they can, again, like you're doing, get their questions answered live. So there's a way you can look at some of those tools and then the webinars can be available for viewing later. If you don't want to do webinars, you can just record some videos and put them onto YouTube, set them as uh, private so people can only view them with a link. And that will help people sometimes with their more common questions so that when it comes to the, their specific ones, maybe working on their speech, you can then spend that time helping them. Yes, thank you for that, Andy. There's also another tool. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Don't swear. 
Yes, there's also another tool called the Moments of Truth. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you've got any experience in using that, Andy. The Moments of Truth, yeah, that's a good way, because the Moments of Truth is you're looking at your club. You're looking at how well you're doing it. And I know it's been the Moments of Truth. It's like you know, the MOT we do for our car. How is the car going? What work does it need? And the Moments of Truth are something we should do regularly. I've got to be honest, they can sometimes again be pushed back because you've got so many pressure for slots. But it's a way of looking at what are you doing as a club? Where can you become even better at that? So moments of truth are great things to do in every club. And certainly, I think they're often covered at area training that committees go to. But they're saying, I think every club should do at least once a year to keep the club focused, to see where you can go. And the good thing about it is there is discussion on it. So therefore, it gets everybody involved and it more importantly gets their buy-in when people are discussing it and agreeing. Uh, things that you as a club can do to do to grow and to move forward. Yes, I have an interesting question here, Andy. Mark mm -hmm. says in his experience, Toastmasters is very well known in countries like the USA and whereas in the UK, he has to explain Toastmasters very frequently. Uh, how, 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 how can we improve the awareness of Toastmasters outside of Toastmasters. What do you think? That, that, that is, oh, look, see, Barry. Hello, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me answer that question. Hello. So, Toastmasters is um, well known in America. Absolutely right. In the UK, I think we often talk about Toastmasters. and People think of the men and women in their red jackets who do the more formal lunchtime stuff. So I agree it is, and I have to explain it to people as what it is. Hopefully that as we grow, and Toastmasters is growing, you know, huge amounts. When I joined 10 years ago with 30 clubs in London, now we've got around 85. So there is that growth. And hopefully when people, I suppose the kids, if our members are going out there, talking about it, talking to their colleagues, their friends, that will raise the, the, the awareness. We are obviously a voluntary organisation. We don't have huge funds. We can't do a massive advertising campaign on the back of buses or on billboards, which I would love to see. So suddenly we can't do that kind of thing. But I think it's by letting people know about us, letting us know about our great pedigree, the great work we do, slowly that will build the brand, slowly that will let people know about us. And then gradually, I think it will raise the profile. But it is often done through, through word of mouth, through social media, which we now have access to as well. And I think if we keep working on those, it does build it up. I found when I talk to people, now more people are aware of it than they ever used to be because uh, uh, my mom, I used to have to explain it to everybody. But there is a little bit more awareness about it now and hopefully we can build that so that one day everybody will know about Toastmasters International. Well, welcome online, Barry. Would you like to say hello to everyone else? <laughs> hello, everyone. A little bit late. I have been trying to get my technology to work, so I apologise about that. Uh, I feel like I've left poor Andy in the lurch a little bit, but it, we're, you're in good hands with Andy. Thank you, mate. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we are exploring membership growth and retention. Uh, as I said, this is a panel discussion with myself, Wally Oshosami, uh, Andy O'Sullivan, and Barry O'Connell. Uh, Barry's just joining us, uh, and welcome, Barry, once again. I don't know if you have any opening remarks you'd like to make, Barry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'll, co I'll come in with a roar if I can. And by that, I mean, because you've got to have a great acronym. And I, I, my, my thing around retention is roar. You want the club to roar. It's all about relationships. It's about outreach, achievement, and reciprocation. So if you give to the members something that they value, a quality club experience, then therefore my, they're far more likely to give back whether that be in the form of service on the committee or whatever else. But uh, yeah, relationships have to be built from the moment they join the club. There's no point in, you know, every six months going out and saying, or every year, however frequently you, you, you take your payments, going out and saying, oh, can we have your money? And you haven't spoken to them in that time. I think especially it's up to the, the president, the VPA, the treasurer, but really everybody on the committee and indeed, you know, across the club, People should know each other. People should be friends. People should understand why why someone has joined Toastmasters, what their expectations are. Uh, so, you know, I really believe it starts with the relationship. And then, you know, 
we attract we attract different kinds of people in Toastmasters. I'm the kind of person who'll put my hand up and you know I won't be shy about coming forward and, and asking to be involved in something but not everybody's like me some people want to be invited and so I think it's important to do a little bit of outreach as a committee so the things aren't always it's the same people the same faces doing the same things and so how that might play out in a club might be do you always have the same three or four people being a Toastmaster are new members given a path to being the Toastmaster do they realise that those opportunities are available to everybody? And sometimes that invo that invo that means you've got to reach out, invite, and include people specifically because they might not know that they're part that that that's what they can do. And um, the A is it's about it's got to be about achievement. Members have to be achieving what they want. In order to do that, you have to know what the members want to uh, what they want to achieve, um, and you've got to celebrate that. And I know there was some conversation a little bit about people. Joining the club, we, you know, my club, we make a big deal of people joining the club. We make a big deal of them doing an icebreaker. We want to celebrate their success and have the club celebrate their success. Uh, so the achievement has to be has to be there and it has to be recognised. Um, and finally, you've got to give people something, the, the, the reciprocation. You've got to give them a, a good member experience. You've got to be including them. Um, but I think you also have to challenge them. You have to, to go out and say, will you join the committee or if you want to join the committee will you get involved in this pr campaign or will you help arrange this club special event these are all things that can actually be worked on in the various manuals uh so that's that's my very 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 quick what i wanted to say so yeah roar exactly yes i like that acronym raw uh talking of relationships uh, people ask me why did I join Toastmasters? I joined because I had a fail of public speaking. But why am I staying? Uh, I think I overcame my fail of public speaking very earlier on. Uh, and I stayed mainly because of uh, the opportunity of meeting lovely people like yourself, Barry and Andy uh, and Florian and the many people that you meet at conference, at uh, district events. So it is the relationships that keeps us going. So there was a question earlier about how do you keep people beyond uh, the competent communication stage, CC? And I think relationships do make a big difference. If people make friends in Toastmasters, if people are able to travel to uh, across their district, uh, perhaps internationally for some who might have the opportunity uh, to contest the conferences, uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a, a different world out there. There is life beyond our club, and so I think the relationships is quite an important part. Thank you for that, Barry. Uh, yes. Any questions for Barry, the raw man? <laughs> raw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People might want to go to bed now. <laughs> I put them to sleep. <laughs> Well, uh, it's the first in the series of the District 91 uh, Membership Growth and Retention webinar. And uh, we have overcome a little bit of technical challenges just to bring this webinar uh, to you tonight. So thank you for staying tuned. Uh, uh, yes, there will be a recording of this webinar made available to attendees. Uh, tonight with me, my name is Wale Oshosami. Uh, I am your host for tonight, and I've uh, had with me Barry O'Connell and Andy O'Sullivan. Uh, thank you once again for listening. Uh, thank you for staying with us. Uh, we still have a few more minutes to handle some questions and answers, so if you do have any questions, please pop it into the chat box. Yes, there is a question about change in venue. Uh, Let's let's have Barry. What are your thoughts on that? How does the change in venue affect membership? Uh, I think uh, this is something that we've recently discussed in one of the clubs I'm a member of. The worst thing you can do is try lots of venues and nobody ever knows where they're going. I think it's important for the committee to do the research, find a venue that's going to work and go with it. Because if you pick the wrong venue and then you decide we've got to change, at each point, there's a risk of losing people. So I think you really need to, as a committee, find the right venue, 
and then go with it advertise it make sure make sure all your social media and websites are updated with the correct venue i mean andy's talked about websites being out of date we've experienced in in one of my clubs unfortunately uh meet up not having the correct venue and we were meeting somewhere else and as soon as i got involved with that club it's the first thing i said is we we've got to be consistent we can't say on one place we're going to be here and then just not be there people may never come back after that i'm not sure i would to be honest mm. uh, so do your homework pick a venue and you know go with it uh put all of your efforts into that one venue it may not be perfect but trying to trying to you know we were trying to look at lots of different places i really don't think that works mm. i just say all of that it, it is when, when we've had to change venue before so double booked or whatever literally just moving across the road we lost people they didn't come we were literally a few yards across the road so it is so important to get that consistency that people know always where you're going to be and like you barry i've visited clubs and they've moved miles away but their website still has the wrong address and you know you're going to go to the wrong venue once and then you, you would just give up so it's absolutely yeah. right it's got to be up to date and try and get that 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 firm venue near public transport if appropriate because that is uh important to where people are coming from by from london or wherever and they need a train a bus or whatever rather than maybe too far so you gotta make sure it's suitable for your community i guess uh that people can easily get there as as, as well uh and talking of moving venues i know that in our club we've actually had to intentionally move venues change venues a venue that wasn't working for us which was a little bit far from public transport and when we changed venue we saw an increase in membership uh so people were able to find us easily and uh, that increased uh the walking through the front door and might i say it also helped to close the back door uh, so we weren't losing people simply because they just couldn't find where we are so we can be intentional with venues as well Yes, just find something that works and then put your effort into it. So thank you for that, Barry. Uh, someone asked again, Barry, if you can just quickly summarize the raw principle. Sure. What I'll do right now is just tell you what the letters stand for. And, and I will be doing a webinar expanding on this later in the year. So the R is relationship. It's all about the relationships, both from the committee to the member, but also just generally within the club. People remain members of Toastmasters, as you've said, Wale, because they become friends with people. It's about the relationship. Outreach. So not everybody's like me. Some people want an invitation. They want to feel involved and included. You know, don't create cliques. Don't have the same faces doing the same things all the time. And that includes in terms of managing the club, running the club, running special events. Try to include as many people as possible. People step up when they're invited. Uh, and achievement is obviously very important, recognizing the achievements, celebrating the achievements, and of course, having the achievements in the first place, so that ROA. And then finally, reciprocation, give people something. So a quality experience, get them to their CC, and then say, right, well, now you've got your CC, we really need more advanced speakers in our club. People are, you know, that was a question I think earlier on, how do you include people, how do you, get them to stay on well you've given them something so ask them to stay on you know make they might feel this is the end of the road if you explain it's the beginning you've given them something ask for something in return you know that's why people that's why charities give a free pen in the in an envelope sometimes because psychologically we feel that they've just given me something i have to give something back so let, let let's you know make sure people know that we have given something to them they'll want to give us something back Yes, we've still got another eight minutes of our advertised time. So that is uh, 15 minutes of question and answer after the hour mark. And uh, the questions seem to be slowing down now. As Barry said, people are going to be uh, moving on to something else. Okay, so I'm just going to summarize tonight. I'm going to thank everyone, thank our panelists, thank uh, Andy O'Sullivan for stepping in as he usually does. 
Uh, we've had a bit of technical challenges, but Leica like said this is the first in the series, and uh, the next one, which I believe is on the 5th of November, you'll get the, the announcement for that. I'm just going to tell you very quickly what that is all about. So we've got on this on Sunday, the 5th of November, creating clubs that are me- that are member magnets, clubs that are member magnets, and uh, on Sunday, the 19th of November. We've got building a championship club. You'll be hearing more about these webinars as time goes on. Oh, thank you all for staying late tonight. It's been a pleasure being your host. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, very much. And, uh, thank you for our attendees and uh, have a good. We're going to let you off early tonight. Uh, so do enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, it's good to have been with you tonight. Thank you once again. Thanks. Get out home. Thank you. Bye bye.